Chapter Four of The Treasure Hunter's Tale. The treasure hunters sighed, but before they turned to go, sent a message to the king asking him for their forgiveness in failing to persuade this naughty, trifling man to take the historical treasure seriously, and asked if yet something they had said may get through to the heart. The birds were now swooping in and out of the clouds, catching insects on the wing and chirruping with delight and gratitude to the king. And soon evensong began, and the three men decided to have their evening meal out in the warm setting sun. For, said they, we are grateful for the sun and the food and even the ants, for they teach us such wonderful things about hard work and industrial efforts. They were just finishing their meal, a simple meal of five loaves and two fish provided by the Prince Emmanuel's own hands, when they heard, heard a small timid voice excusing itself for disturbing them, and looking up they saw one of the ladies from Mr Ungrateful's party. I'm so sorry to wait so late to talk with you, said the lady shyly, but Mr Great Ungrateful would keep talking so. Mr Newhart motioned for the lady to join them, and each man made room so she should not feel pressed in any way. I am so sorry, she said again, but I wanted to ask if you had another Bible. She blushed slightly. My name is Miss Delight in the world, or rather it was, she corrected herself, as she did, uh, and as she did, Mr Newhart noticed her eyes were shining. I don't want to be called that name any more, as I have long thought that Mr Ungrateful was not good company for me. I want to be called Miss Beloved of the King, and have now put away childish things and frivolities, and have this day determined to grow up. But in order to do that, I need a Bible, so please, do you have a spare one? I would not take your own, as I believe now that a Bible is one of the best things anyone can hold in their hands, and I would not have you without one. She smiled a genuine smile. Mr Newhart was quite taken with her. She was so earnest and pretty in her newfound love for her king. He held out his hand. Come, sister, you may have mine. I always carry a spare for such an occasion, and I would rather you had mine, which has all my favourite verses marked out. Although, to be frank, he said, by now that means most of the pages are fully dripping with ink. Miss Beloved of the King blushed. I thank you kindly, sir, she said, and you call me sister, which is the greatest of pleasures to me, as are we not children of the King once we are his and no longer our own? Where did you learn that? It is true enough, but how came you by such truths, queried Mr Newhart. Well, before Mr Ungrateful solved the Bible you kindly gave him, I occasionally peeked at it, for he used to carry it around in his briefcase when we would go about town, and when he was drunken or busy with a grievance, I would sneak a look into its pages. I confess it, mo it was mostly the gold leaf that drew me to it, but I did read some parts and felt my heart stirred. But then I allowed the gaiety of the world to distract me and pull me away. But now you are going on a journey on this road. I would that you had a companion to go with you, said Mr Newhart, truly touched by this young lady's change of heart, but also rather worried for her safety. We could ask the officer, suggested Mr Save by Grace. Ask away, said a cheerful voice, and there, coming along the now dusky road, for you must understand that it was late in the evening, was the officer himself. The three friends smiled and looked at one another. My dear, greeted the officer to the young lady, the king has sent me a message that you are desirous to walk on his road and has sent me to be your guide and protector. Come away now and bid leave these gentlemen, for they have much to do, and we, my dear, must journey in the other direction, for all travellers must begin at the gate. But courage, young lass, for soon you will see the cross and know truly your sins forgiven, and then wonderful things will be bestowed on you for your journey. The young lady curtsied to the officer and then flung her arms around Mr Newhart, which in normal company would be quite improper, for so grateful was she to receive her very own Bible that she was overcome with joy. Mr Newhart blushed. Well, well, dear heart, good journey to you, and maybe our paths will meet before we meet face to face with everyone who has gone before us on that great day when the king himself will welcome us into his kingdom. He had a little glimmer of hope in his voice, as he had always loved the story of Ruth and Boaz, and hoped one day he too might meet a young lady who would show kindness to him. But for now, he knew he must journey on and leave the future in the hands of the king. The officer noticed the look of hope and made a note of it, as he helped the lady take her final leave of the gentleman and carried her away. Well, what a wonderful answer to our message to the king, you want Mr. Save by Grace. And now, my dear brothers, we must make camp, for I fear it is too late to travel this road to find an inn, as it is so dark now, I can barely see the hand in front of my face. Just then an owl hooted. Aye, and it's past my bedtime, grinned Mr. Discover the Truth, settling down under a blanket from his kit bag. Before they went to sleep, each treasure hunter stored up in his heart what he had taken from the day, and Mr Newhart thanked the king for the wonderful change and Miss Beloved of the king, and asked him to keep her safe and help her to grow in the knowledge and love of their king. 
That evening, in the quiet, homely lodgings that the kind and helpful officer had arranged for his new charge, Miss Beloved of the King, now officially named such, as although it was very late when she took her leave of the treasure hunters, the officer had whisked her straight to the hill and the cross, took out her new Bible and held it open. On the first page, she noticed in scrawly writing on the inside cover, To my dearest Daniel, with love from your ever-loving grandmama, and then in slightly neater print, Jesus loves you, this I know, for this Bible tells me so. Well, dear Daniel's grandmama, I believe this is another treasure, but it is now mine to keep, she said, and maybe one day our paths will cross again on the road, she mused wistfully, and then sent her message of thanks to the king. Thank you for the day today and for looking after me so well when I was far away from you, um, from loving you. And now, O oh king, I love you now so dearly, I believe my heart should burst. Oh, but you have given me a new heart. And I feel it now beating within me and praise you for it. Thank you so much for turning me to you. Thank you for giving me the strength to turn away from my old ways and for providing me with this dear Bible. At this, she hugged it close to her and said rather more quietly, and thank you that Daniel had a spare one. Oh, and thank you for sending your officer to help me. I loved my time on the hill. And thank you for my new dress. It's such a lovely fresh colour and not at all like the ones I used to wear. But of course, that's right and good, for I would not want to be mistaken for Mr Light in the world for anything ever again. Oh, please help me to stay in the road and keep it and keep to it always. Oh, and about the armour, I've been told it is necessary, which scares me rather, as I confess I worry I would be no good in a battle. But I know that your good, kind officer will help me, so thank you for that too. Oh dear, she sighed. I'm afraid this is a rather messy message. It was supposed to be all neat and reverent, and I'm afraid my new heart has made it spill all over and become all over the place. Then she checked herself. But I hope you won't mind, as it comes from a place of gratitude and love. Oh, and please help me sleep well tonight, and please forgive naughty Mr Ungrateful, as I know he is beyond hope without you. Lots of love. Oh, I mean, amen. This earnest young lady's message was taken by the officer who made it beautiful, so it was read with the greatest pleasure by his loving majesty and with him the king's son too, and the servants in the king's kingdom rejoiced that another soul had been saved. Before turning in, Miss Beloved of the King read Psalm 23. She had once been made to recite this short psalm at school and had resented being made to stand in front of all her peers, although she had been bought a new dress by, by her aunt for doing it so well. But now, oh now, how those words hugged her as she read them, how they swirled around her and made her heart beat faster. You will go with me. You will comfort me. How truly wonderful to know these words are for me. And then as she snuggled down in her lovely warm bed and sighed, Jesus loves me, this I know, for my Bible tells me so. And smiling with sheer joy, she fell fast asleep.